Good music deserves good branding and good artwork. And in this video, I'll show you how to make your own artwork using Adobe Photoshop. Now here's my little disclaimer, full transparency. I am not a music professional. So everything we're gonna be doing today is purely from a graphic designing standpoint. So with that said, whether you're uploading your music to Apple Music or Amazon Music, or even producing a physical album, your music has to be represented well. Because a good album cover or a good artwork appeals to people who don't know your music and you want to make sure you grab them with your artwork. So with all that said, let's start designing. So we're in Photoshop and the first thing we're gonna do is create our new template just by hitting create new. And we're inputting our size for our template. And nowadays the template for online platforms such as iTunes, as we mentioned earlier, is normally 1600 pixels by 1600 pixels. So a perfect square. And you know we keep our DPI or our resolution to 300 at all times. So let's go ahead and create. All right, here's our blank canvas. Now before we go any further, what we're going to be designing today is the front cover for our album, you know, with my face and the album title and my artist name. And we're going to use the same size as the front cover to make the back of the cover, you know, with the track listing and stuff like that. And the last thing we're going to be designing today is our CD template. You know, what we're going to send off to the printers for them to put on our CDs if you wanted to print a physical album. Remember, if you're doing Apple Music, Amazon Music or any other online platform, all you need is just that front cover. So before we begin, let's save our project. I'm going file, save as, you know the drill, this episode's folder, and we're naming it LSPV017 album cover. Or let's just say album artwork and save. So I'm going into my folder and just dragging in one of the pictures that I took, and I'm just going to size it up accordingly. Maybe about that much. That should be good. You're still seeing my face and you're still seeing the guitar and my very cool shirt that I have on. So as you know, when we're designing, we use guides because we're professionals and we want to have some kind of uniformity in our designs. So I'm just going to drag a few guys over this template. You know, I'm picking from the vertical ruler and holding shift. And I'm going to come out to about 100 pixels on each side. The document is 1600 pixels, so I'm stopping there at 1500, 100 from top, 100 from the bottom, which is 1500 pixels, saving my project once more, okay, alright, so this is what I'm working with. I'm going to add the name of the album and my name onto this so far. And we're going to take it step by step. So the name of the album that I came up with because of the shirt that I have on and the guitar is some kind of country music album. Let's just say country love. So I'm hitting T on my keyboard to start typing. Country love. Um, I'm not going to use this text. Let's do something pretty standard that you all can relate with. All right, and let's just change the leading. It's on auto. I'm over my properties for my text tool. Let's change the leading to about 30, 24. That should be good. And let's change the alignment of the text to align left. All right, and let's make the text a little bit bigger. It's at 32 right now, 32.73. Let's do 36. V for the move tool, and I'm just going to move it over a bit. So I have the name of my album. Next, I want my name. I'm hitting T on my keyboard for the text tool or type tool, and I'm just typing learn, share, photo, video. That's my <laughs> artist's name. And this is way too big. Let's just size it down and make it about 18. I don't want it to be as dominant as the country love V on my keyboard for the move tool and I'm just moving it to about here. Um, the tracking seems a bit excessive on this. Let me just come over to my properties and put it back to zero. That's good. Oh, this is spelled wrong. All right, and let's bring it over to touch the guide. 
I'm going to change the color of the font, but before I do that, let me just add a border to this template. I want to have the border before I start placing the text in its final position. That way I know where everything is gonna fall. So I'm creating a new layer by holding Control, Shift, and N on my keyboard. And I'm just going to name this layer Border, and then hit Enter on my keyboard. And here you see the border layer is here. And then I'm going to hit Control and A on my keyboard to select everything on my border layer. And here's a trick. I'm coming up here to edit. And then I'm going to stroke. And then I'm making a stroke of about 30 pixels. Remember a stroke is just a border. That's the name of borders in Photoshop. And for the color, I'm going to just make it white. And let me just change the location to inside and inside means that the border will be inside of this selection that i just made by clicking ctrl and a center will mean that the center of the border will be on the selection and outside will mean that the border will be outside of the selection and if i select it outside it just means that i won't see the border so let me go ahead and just choose inside okay and there we have it that's our border. Now to get rid of this selection that I still have outside, I'm just going to click Control and D. That's the shortcut to deselect something. Saving my project. See, I'm doing good on the saving this time. And what I also want is I want to make another border, but not as thick as the first one. So for this inside border, I'm going to use a shape layer. So I'm going to select U on my keyboard. And I already have the rectangle shape selected, which is good. And I'm just going to hold shift on my keyboard while I click, which will give me a perfect square because our template is a square, 1600 by 1600 pixels. And that's good. And you see we have our rectangle layer over here in the layers. But what I want is I don't want this to have any white fill as it does right now. So I'm going to come up to fill tool options up top. I'm going to select no fill, no color. And then I'm going to come over to stroke. Remember, I need a border. I'm going to select white. And I'm going to change the size to about 10 pixels. All right, that's what I want for the second border. And I'm going to lock the aspect ratio of my border right here. And I'm going to change this to about 1500. And then I'm coming back over to my layers. And I'm selecting the rectangle layer as well as my background layer and just pressing V on my keyboard for the move tool and then just aligning the vertical and horizontal centers. That way my thin border is perfectly centered matching the thicker outside border. And then we're saving Control and S. All right, and here we are thus far. Now I can move my text and put it where I want it because I have my borders so I know where everything will fall inside of the borders. So I'm going to adjust my country of text just a bit by just going to my character tab here and just clicking on capitalization or all caps. I could have just deleted it and just retyped it all caps, but th that was quicker. And then I'm just going to adjust it because now it's too big. So I'm just going to change the text size over here on my properties tab to about 30. Uh, maybe we can do a 30. Three. That's good. I'm just going to move it up a bit. That's good. Let me see if I can change the color by just picking on my shirt to use this red. Hmm. Do I like the red or do I like the white? Let's change this to white and see it one more time. I think I'll choose red because there's already enough white on the border. And I also think I may get rid of this inside border. Let me just see what it looks like without it. Let me hide my guides by control and semicolon. Mm. Maybe I can make my inside border a little bit thinner by going U on my keyboard. Or I could have just come over here on the right hand side to the properties tab and make the border about 7. See, it's getting thinner there. Let's try five. I think I like it at five. It's not as thick, not as distracting. 
and I think I'll make the country a little bit bigger now. 37. No, sorry. 37, not 27. And then I'm just going to move it to about there. And I'm going to change the leading to about 30. That looks better. That looks better. I think I want to move my image as well. So I'm clicking on my image layer. I'm just moving moving it to about there and the main consideration i have for this country of text is to ensure that it's visible because when this is on itunes or any other streaming platform it's going to be very small let me just zoom out alt on my keyboard and roll my mouse wheel backwards and it is a bit visible i mean it won't be extremely legible but you want it to be somewhat visible right now I'm going to change the learn share photo video to a different font. So I'm clicking on it. T on my keyboard for my font and let's choose Nexa light. Size it down a bit because it's too big. Maybe about 11 and change the tracking by going over to my right hand side properties to about 100 is good. Let me just bring up back the guides, control and semicolon and ensure that the learn share photo video is in the same position as the control of. See the control of is touching. Let me just adjust it a little bit to ensure that it's right on the point. All right, and now I'm going to move my learn share photo video to the same position on the guides. That way when it's printed, it won't be outside of the safe margin that I made. And I think I want to make the photo of me not that saturated but first let's organize our layers so i'm selecting rectangle one double clicking and renaming it inner border renaming border to outer border selecting both of them by control and clicking on both and then control and g on our keyboard for a group and you see we've got a group here if I made it invisible by clicking on the eye, the borders are disappearing and reappearing. Then I'm clicking on the group and naming it borders. Double clicking on the group, sorry, and naming it borders. Saving, control and S. And then now for my image, I'm clicking on it and coming down to the layer tool options on the bottom. And I'm looking for an adjustment layer. And I'm using hue slash saturation. And I'm going to make the saturation over the right hand side about minus 30 or minus 20. All right, that's good. And if you were designing something on your template or your project has a lot of layers in it, anything that is below this hue or saturation layer will be affected by the adjustments that you made on this adjustment layer. So what you can do to avoid that is just right click on the adjustment layer create clipping mask and that will just apply the adjustment layer effects to the layer that it's clipped to so you won't have to worry about it affecting everything else well let me show you the difference of the image with and without the adjustment layer so i'm clicking on the eye see that's it without the adjustment layer the desaturation with without with without with all right saving and i think this is good let me just zoom out to have a look at it i think that's good maybe i'll make the control of text bold let me click on it and just change this from regular to bold i could have also done it over my right hand side properties tab always remember that let me just bring up back the guides to ensure that the country love is in its proper position v on my keyboard for the move tool and i'm just moving it over Right there, that's perfect. All right, hiding the guides once more, and that looks good. That looks good. I'm going to keep the learn share photo video in white, I don't want it to be the same as the country log. All right, and that's it for our front cover. I'm not going to do anything else to this. This is just a basic outline for your album cover or your digital platform artwork. So now we're going to move on to the back of this front cover if you were printing a physical album. So what I'm going to do now to differentiate the front design from the back from the CD layer is 
I'm just going to select everything except the borders because I also want the borders on the back of the cover. Or maybe I don't, but let's just keep it that way for now. So I'm selecting my image, my adjustment layer, my country love, and my learn share photo video. And while I was clicking those, I was holding the control button on my keyboard. Now I'm going to hit control and G for the grouping, and then just rename the group front cover. All right, and that's our front cover. Saving our project file, save. And now we're going to do the back cover. So let me just turn this off. So I'm going into my folder and just dragging and dropping the image that I want to use. And I'm going to just size this up to about 60%. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that's what I want. And I want to put the track listing right here on this side. Enter, and that's good. This guitar belongs to my cousin, by the way. I don't think he knows how to play it. I definitely don't know how to play it. So this was just for the purposes of this tutorial. So let's give this image the same treatment as we did the first image with the desaturation. So I'm just going to duplicate the adjustment layer from the front cover. I'm just holding Alt on my keyboard and clicking on the hue and saturation and just dragging it up above the back cover. So I'm closing front cover. Same treatment, right click, create clipping mask. That way the desaturation only affects the layer that it's clipped to. That outside border is really strong. Let me just turn it off for now. I may even leave it like this for the rest of the project. Let's see. It's just really strong. All right, let's just leave it off for now. So we're typing out our track listing as well as just some placeholder copyright text that would go right here. You normally see those on every physical print. So I'm hitting T on my keyboard for my type tool text and I'm just dragging and creating a box and that will automatically give me some placeholder text. Let me size it down. Let me adjust the bleeding to about, let's just do auto. Size it down some more, about nine. Nine is a bit heavy. And let's change this text to next uh, light. I think that was the, I think that's the text that we used for the learn share. And let's just change the color to white. Just making this box a bit smaller. And we're just dragging it down. Bring our guides on so we know where to stop. Right there. Remember, this is just placeholder text. I'm showing you how it would look on a physical print. So you can go in and change this font to whatever you want based on your musical project. Turn off the guides. And then let's start typing our track listing. So track one, do I want to write track one or just the number one? Let's do track one and then let's duplicate that control and the J and just drag it down and then let's write a title. Let's say country love title track of the album. And then I'm going to change the color of the country love to red. I'm just changing the color over here on the properties tab. Now you see that it is really helpful to have this properties tab over the right hand side. That way you won't have to click on your text tool or your shape tool whenever you want to make an adjustment. Picking on the white on the properties tab and just picking the color on my shirt. That color that I just chose may be different from the one that's on the front cover because the one that's on the front cover, I picked the color from the shirt before or desaturating the image so it may be different let's just check so i'm clicking on the color box and this color code says a21 whatever cancel let's go into our front cover selecting the country love clicking on the color code and you see it's different it says bb0937 so what i'm going to do is just copy this right clicking copy cancel clicking on the country love let's close this front cover group and then clicking on the color box for the control on the back cover and just pasting 
the code that we got from the front there. See, it's very different. You can see the difference right here. So this is the new one that we just got, and this is the one that we had. Let's make the country level a bit bigger by coming over to the right hand properties tab, about 12, moving it down a bit. Now remember earlier I selected the all caps feature from the characters tab by clicking here on the character tab and selecting all caps. I'm just going to deselect that, that way we're not confused when you're typing. Because if you're watching the video and you didn't realize that we did that, it may throw you off. Let me just undo and show you what I mean. So control and Z, undo. See, this is saying all caps right here, right? You're seeing that in all caps. But when you look on your layer right here, it's not in all caps. The country is in standard capitalization and then the love is in all caps. But right here, everything is showing all caps. So that's a good point to note. So I'm just going to deselect it once more. So we actually type what we want and nobody is confused. Country, love, that's good. And I'm just going to select the track one and bring it on top. And then select track one and country love and just duplicate with control and J and just drag it down so I can get track two. Track two. And I'm going to name track two out west because it's a country album, so why not? Now I'm going to select track two and track one with the track titles over the layers here. And I'm just going to control and J once more. And it's going to drag it down and you should get a prompt. See this right now on the screen, that's saying 24 picks with the little arrows. It's just letting you know that what you have here is the equal amount of distance between each of your text layers so i'm just going to change this to track three track four do i want the track five let's just do four tracks for now track four let's name track four wanted man. all right and we're saving our project and let's group all of those Let me move them down in order let's name all of those bring this down in order Bring track two down in order. Let's group them and name them tracks or track listing. Saving, that's good. Bring up the guides and see how the tracks fall. Now the track listing needs to be over to the edge of the guides just for uniformity. But the reason why I wouldn't do that is what if one of these track names was really long, right? Let me just undo that. So let's just change wanted man to slash woman that way we can see for design purposes how something would look if one of these track names so now this is more practical because if one of these track names were longer than all the others as i said earlier this is how it would look now let's change the track one and the track two all those fonts let's change those to the font that we had on the country level on the front cover which was perpetua bold that way it's just a bit different from the track names themselves and we're just saving and this is good i'm not going to do much more obviously if you had more tracks you would just duplicate and make more tracks and track names going down so this is good for the back cover what i think i want to do is just adjust the placeholder text here and just write in a copyright um, line that you guys can see what that would look like so i'm typing in copyright and the little copyright symbol, you get the copyright symbol by holding Alt on your keyboard 0169. That's the shortcut on Windows. I'm not sure about it on Mac, but you can just Google it. Learn, share, photo, video, all rights reserved. And let's just make that line smaller, about five or, yeah, about five is good. Just make that smaller and then i'm grouping everything that concerns the back of the album the track listing the placeholder the adjustment layer and the image control and a g on my keyboard i'm just naming it back cover and that's good for the back cover now let's move on to the cd so i'm just going to turn off the back cover group that way we're not seeing it 
Now let's look at our ruler for a second. Our ruler is this area right here. And these measurements are in pixels because that's what we did earlier. So if you right click on it, you'll see that it's in pixels. And that's what we were working with earlier when we were making our front and back cover that was 1600 pixels. Now for this CD, the measurements that I'm going to use are inches. So I'm just going to select inches and then I'm going to bring in my image and then start making the CD outline. So I'm going to bring in the image that I want to use on the back, which is this one right here without the guitar. And I'm going to make this a bit bigger about there. And I'm going to turn off the border that we have because I do not want this for my CD. Let's bring it down. Now the size of a physical CD is 4.7 inches wide by 4.7 inches high. And obviously a CD is a circle. So we're going to make a circle with a diameter of 4.7 inches. So we're going to hit U on our keyboard. So as you can see, we have the rectangle selected here on our shape tool and we want to get the ellipse or the circle. What we can do is hit shift on our keyboard and the letter U and that will cycle through our shapes until we get the circle or ellipse. And we're going to click and drag while holding shift because we want a perfect circle. Remember we're clicking and dragging and holding shift on our keyboard and we're coming up to our tool options up top. And the first thing we're doing is locking the aspect ratio because we want a perfect circle. And we're changing these measurements from pixels to inches. And we're right clicking, just as how we did it for our rulers. And changing this to inches, changing this to inches. And we want our circle to be in the middle of our template. So we're selecting our circle layer over here as well as the background layer. Hitting V on our keyboard for the move tool and then align in the vertical and horizontal centers. Right now you're not seeing the circle because it's underneath my image layer. So I'm just going to bring it up above over here. And there we are. And I don't want the fill, I want the outline of the circle. So I'm going to hit U on my keyboard and then change the fill to no fill or no color. Change the stroke to white with one pixel yeah one pixel is fine you can still see that and i'm going to deselect it and this is our outline so whatever we're designing for our cd should fall within this line what i'm going to do next is duplicate this circle and make it a bit smaller that way the smaller circle will act as our guide because we can't do circular guides so i'm duplicating it by hitting ctrl and j on my keyboard and you see it came up over here in the layers Let's just rename them by double clicking and naming it full CD. And then let's name this one design guide. And we're going to resize it by hitting U on our keyboard and coming up top to our tool options and, and reducing it to about 4.3. That's good. And then we're just going to align it by selecting it and our background layer pressing v for the move tool and then just aligning the centers so nothing we design will pass this inside circle i'm just going to change the color of it hitting u once more and changing the color to blue that way it looks similar to our traditional guides so nothing we design will be outside of this blue safe area, all right? Now the next thing to note for our CD is that there's a hole in the middle of every CD. And for that hole in the middle, nothing will be printed there. So let's go ahead and make another circle to represent that hole in the middle. And the size of that hole in the middle is 0 0.53 inches. So I'm hitting U on my keyboard and making another circle, clicking and holding shift. And I'm just going up top to change the size to 0 0.53 inches and I'm changing the fill. I don't want a fill, but I do want a stroke. And I'm going to use red because nothing will be in this design area. And then we're just aligning it vertically and horizontally and renaming it CD hole. And there's even another area on your CD that may or may not be printed on. So let's just add that just to be safe. And the size of that other area is 1.49 inches. You could do 1.5, but let's just do 1.49. So you on our keyboard, clicking and dragging while holding shift. 
And as you can see over here on our layers, we didn't get a new layer like we did for all the others. That was because the CD hole was already selected while I was doing this new one. And what Photoshop will do sometimes is it will combine the two circles on the same shape layer. And that's not what we want. We want every single element to be on its own layer. So let's just control and Z undo. And let's just not select a shape layer and just do it again. So we're clicking, dragging while holding shift. And we're going up top to change the size to 1.49 clicking the shape and our background aligning the vertical and horizontal centers by clicking v on our keyboard changing the fill to no color and changing the stroke to let's use yellow this time all right there we are that's good now we can go ahead and move around our image on our template as well as add the album name and the artist name so i'm just going to move the image around and i want to see the edge of the image while i'm moving it so i'm going to hit ctrl and t for the transform options and i'm just going to move it around and by edges i mean like if i'm moving it here i don't want the edge to come off like that so let's move it to about here doesn't matter if my ears is printed or not, that should be fine. As long as most of my face is printed. All right, so we're keeping it within the blue and within the yellow, just in case. And we're clicking enter because that's where we want the image to be. The next thing I want to do is I want the image to be black and white. So I'm going down to my adjustment layers like we did before. Hue and saturation. And to get it black and white, we're going to bring the saturation all the way down to minus 100. Previously, we did minus 30, but for a full black and white, let's do minus 100. And we're right clicking on the adjustment layer and create clipping mask. That way it only affects the image layer. All right. The next thing I'll do is borrow the title from the front cover. So I'm opening the front cover group and I'm clicking on the control of and also learn share because we want both of them. And I'm clicking Ctrl and J. And you see it says Learn Share Photo Video Copy, Ctrl of Copy. And I'm just dragging them above the image layer outside of the front cover group. And then closing the front cover group. And now we can create a CD group. So we're clicking on each element that would be in the CD group. So the image will be there, Adjustment Layer, Ctrl of Learn Share, and all the guides. Ctrl and G group and we're renaming the group CD that's good now we're going to adjust the text for the learn share and the country love so it falls within the guides so I'm just going to side down the country love by hitting control and my keyboard and the letter T and just dragging one of the corners till I think it's at an appropriate size that looks good I think enter and I'm going to rotate the control of 90 degrees counterclockwise. <laughs> control and T once more. And I can just enter the rotation here, or I can just select one of the corners and hold shift on my keyboard and just do it manually. Enter, and that's where I want it. And I want it to be over on this side. So I'm just going to align the vertical center by Selecting the control of, selecting my background layer, hitting V on my keyboard and just aligning the vertical center. It's perfectly centered. All right, now we're just going to add the learn share photo video and resize it. And I think I want it to be above the control of. Rotate it, just repeating the process. Let's align it to the controller by repeating the process. So we're selecting learn share and our background layer and aligning the vertical centers. And we're just going to size down the learn share photo video a bit by using our right hand properties. Let's make it about 10. That should be good. And then we're just going to align it once more. That looks good. That looks good. The last thing I want to add to this CD is some copyright info. Similar to what we did on the back cover. I'm just going to put some placeholder text, but I'm going to write it in the form of a circle. 
that's how they normally have it on CDs. Now, how you can write in a circle is you would draw a circle or make a circular shape and just hit T on your keyboard for your text tool. And we have many circles here to choose from. So we're just going to use this blue one. So we're going to select the blue circle layer, which is design guide. And we're going to hover the text tool cursor over the blue circle and you'll notice it changes. See that? It changes. And that means you can type on a path or type on a shape. And in this case, our shape and path is a circle. So I'm just going to click and automatically you can see the placeholder text is there. So let me just size this down to about eight, maybe a little bit more. Let's do five. All right, that's good. And then I'm going to add the same thing that I did on the back cover, which was just that learn share copyright. I'm just going to type it out at the end here. Copyright and the symbol alt and 0169 2020 learn share photo video full stop all rights oops rights reserved i believe all of that was in all caps so let me control and a select everything come to my character options and then click all caps all right now i can make it a bit smaller let's do five let's do four sorry or maybe three yeah i think three is good because obviously when it's all caps the words are bigger v on our keyboard for our move tool now it's outside of the blue area and remember we want our design to be inside the blue area so let me hit Control on my keyboard and the letter t to transform my copyright info and i'm just going to resize it up top to about 90 percent well let's do 95 maybe 97 all right now that's good that's good what i'll do next is just rotate the copyright info that way it's not underneath the controller but it's over this side to my face so let me just control and t on my keyboard and let's just rotate it to have it somewhere that we like all right and that's good and maybe it's a little bit too bright so let me just reduce the opacity by clicking on the layer and then coming right above it to opacity and changing that to about 50 percent all right saving our project and i think i want to adjust the copyright info it's not quite matching the blue outline so let me just use my arrow keys on my keyboard and just move it down a bit and over to the left a bit perfect that's better so in saving this, I don't want all these outlines to be on the saved file. These outlines are just for all references and we don't want to send this to the printers because if you do, when it's printed, you will see these outlines. So let's go ahead and turn off the guides. Turning off design guide, full CD guide, CD hole, and this one, didn't we name this one? Let's name it clear area on CD because that's what it is and we're turning that off and now we can save it and now we can save each of these designs as their own file meaning we can save a cd template file we can save a cd cover file and a back cover file all right let's go file save as and we're naming this artwork dash cd and we're changing the type to jpeg and you know we're maxing it out as it already is clicking ok let's go for front cover and the back cover turning off cd turning on back cover going file save as naming this dash back cover changing the file type to jpeg and clicking save and then ok we're just repeating the process for the front cover turning off the back cover turning on front cover oh that looks nice and we're just save as you know the drill front cover jpeg save okay now let's have a look at all of them side by side but in order to do that i have to make a new template and put them all on it side by side and then save that for you so let's do that real quick so we're going file and then new and let's change this to 1920 by 1080 okay 
and then just drag all of what we just did onto that new template. So I'm going to size them all down by selecting all of them and hitting Ctrl and T on my keyboard and then manually sizing them down to where I think they can all fit on the screen together. That should be good. 60%, 61%. Enter. This pink line on the screen means that it's in the center of the template. And then let's do the back cover. And the CD. Obviously, it needs to be sized down some more. Let's transform it a bit more. That's good. And then enter. Let me just save this real quick as LSPV017 album layout. That way we can see what it all looks like. Enter, enter, and then saving it one more time as a JPEG. So file, save as, changing the type to JPEG. And then we can view this all together. I'm really excited. All right, let's find it in our folder. Open it as a slideshow pause. <laughs> Whoa, this is nice, nice, nice. I almost look believable as an artist, but I am no good with music, no good with singing. Trust me. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Please let me know in the comments. Would you buy my album? Would you buy my music? I really believe that any label that saw this country music guy would really want to sign him, right? <laughs> that is all for today's tutorial, guys. Thank you so much for watching and helping me to start my music career. Once again, my name is C-Jam and I will see you guys in the next video.